Hi, we're going to make this mid-century inspired clock today. I'm Rob Johnstone. I'm Russ Fogel from Shaper Tools. I'm Jake Stillwell from Shaper Tools. Let's start making some sawdust. Now some of you might be wondering, just what is a Shaper origin? I think of it as a handheld CNC machine, kind of like a handheld router with a GPS system. They are truly versatile and easy to use. Okay, so I'm really excited because I get to work with these two guys from Shaper Origin who are going to more fully explain how to use this machine. So I sent them a picture of a project that I didn't know how I could make any other way. So I sent them the picture. How did it come to this? So Rob, when you sent me that picture, I did a little bit of manipulation to it on the computer, and this is what we've got. We've got a Shaper Hub project now that's available with the digital template to make this clock. So that means that anybody who's bought into the Shaper system can get to the, these files. Exactly. Shaper Hub is our digital location for any possible file, basically pre-made project that you would want to make. We've got furniture, we've got home decor, we've got fixtures for your shop, and even all kinds of hardware files, digital templates that are pre-made. So even a non-expert guy like me can find all those things. Yes, absolutely. We also have a few other ways of making templates for the tool. You can make simple shapes and text on the tool itself, including box joints. Or if you want to make your own more complicated files, you can do those on Shaper Studio, which is our simplified digital design tool for craftspeople. So I can handle that too. Absolutely. So I'm really excited to get started cutting out the clock body, but is there something we should be doing before we do that? There is. All right. We want to cut out all of the positive pieces first. Positives. Yeah, that's anything that's going to be inlaid into the body of the clock. So that includes the rays and the clock face. All right. Well, let's show you what we mean. Okay, so I came up with this really groovy idea of pouring resin for the clock face, but how are we going to shape it into a clock face? Well, we're going to cut it like any other plastic. Uh, we are going to use an O-flute bit, o -flute? specifically one of our new 5 millimeter O-flutes. This is one of my favorite bits now. Uh, it's going to give us a really nice finish on the plastic. Yeah, why, do you, why is it better on plastic? You said something about the chips come out easier? Yeah, so a single O-flute it extracts all the chips up and out of the cut faster, mm -hmm. and the single flute versus a double flute uh, produces less friction oh. and is less likely to melt the plastic. So to cut this uh, clock face, we're using the workstation. Um, what's the advantage of the workstation over just me st sticking some tape on here? Well, it's mainly the ability to adjust this shelf height to mm -hmm. any height, because we want everything to be coplanar. So this is uh, an odd thickness, and we're able to bring the shelf up so everything is nice and flush, and it gives us a nice surface to cut onto. This is a bigger shelf than we normally do, which usually we, we don't advise going too far out, but a little bit is okay for right now. Okay. It gives us some more room. Okay, so now we've cut the positives. Now the next step is what? Now we're gonna cut the clock body. All right, that's what I've been waiting for. Beautiful board of Paduk. And what's this? Underneath we have a spoil board, and that is just so that we don't cut into this awesome bench, that we just lightly cut into the spoil board. So I have used the Origin before many times, but I've been told I use way too much tape. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you the rule of thumb. I go for about four inches on center for each strip, but don't stress too much about it. Don't get your calipers. The most important thing is that it's stuck down. It stays stuck down. And it stays stuck down, exactly. Now you mentioned something to me about 
put two rows of tape at the end of the board? Yeah, and I'm gonna do that just because as we get to the top of this design, it's gonna get a little sparse on the tape, and I wanna make sure that I can see at least two rows while we're at the very top, but everything else is gonna be great. That sounds groovy. All right, now we've got that, let's get going. All right. So we're going to get started here. What's the first step? All right, first we need to scan. And by scanning, that's how the origin knows where it is on the piece of wood. Exactly. It's looking at all these little individual dominoes and it's piecing together what we call a workspace. Nice. Then after that, mm -hmm. we need to create a grid. Why would we need to create a grid? We've already got tape. Well, grid is gonna give us a physical reference point instead of just a visual reference point. And we're going to be flipping this whole board and cutting things on the backside too. So we wanna be able to accurately replace the file. That makes sense. We're gonna start off by gridding this corner, come over here to this corner, and lastly, this edge. And so this is called a probe. Yes, physically using the router bit as a probe. All right, and now we're gonna place the digital template on this wood. How do we know where to put it? Well, we're gonna to try to center it on this board and remember where we put it so we can flip it after the fact. But we start off with an import, got our mid-century clock file, and there it is. I'm gonna use the position feature to tell it to go 10 inches over and nine and a half inches up. That's too tall. I thought that was seven. Seven and a half, that's what I meant. <laughs> Perfect. There it is. Now I hit place and we're ready to rock. All right. So I assume we're gonna now cut the big outside shape of the clock. Not yet. We're gonna start with just cutting the rays. For these little guys? Yep, we're gonna do a shallow 16th inch deep pocket for each of those rays using a tiny 16th inch cutter. Groovy, man. Let's do it. All right, do you think I can do this? Absolutely. All right, cool. Put my hearing protection on. So there's 60 of these rays we're gonna cut. There are. If you wanna <laughs> what? split them between all of us, we can. I think we should. So what happens if we cut all 60 of these things and I didn't cut those rays perfectly sized? That's why we're gonna cut one first and then we're gonna test fit. All right. From there, we can adjust the offset to fine tune the fit. All right. Well, let's get started. All right. I, got, I found one. Turn it on. Yep. a little groove. So, let's see. Well, it doesn't fit. Okay, so here we're just gonna add a negative offset of 0 0.012, and that should give us the perfect fit. And do one more pass, and once we know that that fits, we can do all of them that way. Okay, that's cool. All right, here I go. That's pretty cool. That should be oh man, that a nice tight fit. And it sticks out just the right amount. Excellent. Yeah. Doggy doggy, that was a lot of grooves we made there. So I'm guessing now is the time we start to cut the outside of it. So what we want to do next is we want to flip the work over because what we're going to do is install this clock face from the backside. Okay, so is that why we made the graph? 
The grid. The grid? Yeah. The grid. Yeah, that's so, what I meant, the grid. That's exactly why we made the grid. The grid is going to allow us to flip this work over and put that template in exactly the same place. Let's get busy. Okay, so now we're gonna flip it over and get busy cutting, right? One last thing. One thing. Okay. We need to put down a couple rows of double-sided tape because once we cut this clock body free, the hold downs aren't going to be holding it down anymore. That makes sense to me, all right. That's some pretty good looking double-sided tape you got there. This is our Shaper Special double-sided tape. It's pressure sensitive. It's just the right amount of tackiness. It holds to your wood, but won't tear it apart when you take it off. Nice. And just a couple strips is all you need. Is it easy enough to get this backing off? Yep, I usually scrape just a little bit with my thumbnail and then it lifts the corner. All right. There we go. Thank you. All right, let's flip this over. All right. You want the hold downs? I do want the hold downs, and we're gonna push on this double-sided tape to make sure that it's holding in place. Okay. Go ahead. Perfect. I think we're good. You want this thing? Yes. Or do we need tape? We do need tape. All right. You're absolutely right. All right. All right, so about four inches apart. About four inches apart, that's right. There you go. Now do I wanna do two up here? Yep, let's get a couple extra rows at the top. Do I need to put something in between yeah, there? Yeah, let's get, let's get right in between the hold downs there. Let's do one more for good measure right there. I'm all for more tape. You've seen, okay. me, you've seen me work before. There we go, that'll yeah. work. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna use the grid. We're gonna use the grid again, exactly. All right, I assume you need this thing. We're gonna use Origin, and let's swap back out for that gridding router bit, the underside of that engraving bit, yep. Okay, All right. so now we need to put the grid down on this. Is it the same grid as we just made? So there are a couple steps that uh -huh. we need to do here. We need to rescan because we have new tape. Okay. We are going to make a new grid because that grid's going to be off of this corner rather than this corner, remember, because we flipped this workpiece over. Okay. So what used to be over here is now over here. And we're going to flip our template oh. in the router as well it's because good. the piece is flipped upside down. Right, got okay. it, yep. So let's get that going. We're going to scan, make a new scan. Taking a big picture of this workpiece. Mm -hmm. It's now in the origin's brain. It's now in the brain. Yeah. We're gonna make that new grid, and I'm gonna do it the same way that you and Jake did it earlier, just off the other corner. So we've got point one, point two, and point three. And now we're going to import that same template, mid-century clock. Mm -hmm. The only difference is we're going to flip it horizontally. So it's gonna go on the, the X and the Y of the grid. It's gonna go on the X and the Y of the grid the same way that we did it before. It's going to go instead of positive 10, positive seven, it's gonna go negative 10 from this corner mm -hmm. and positive seven. Okay, and we can hit the green button to place that file. All right. Cool, we're all set yeah. to cut out the circle and the outline. Have you flipped it 180 degrees yet? I've flipped it 180 degrees, I already did that. All right, uh, cool. That's when you bring the file in. Mm -hmm. So now it's time to cut the circle or the outside. Let's cut the circle first. It's easier to cut things, uh, all the other features in the part before you cut them free. Okay. Right. So we'll cut the circle and then we'll cut the whole thing free. All right, so. Let's get started. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, now I really get to do some cutting. I'm ready. All right. 
I successfully cut that out, and not only that, the face fits in there. Yeah, we got our test fit. This looks great. You got a perfect fit and a perfect circle. So now, now do I finally get to cut the outside of this thing? Finally, Rob, let's All get right. started. Let's go. So now we just need to take this thing off. Huh? Exactly. Seems like forever ago that I uh, put those things on. So. Yeah, so let's pry off this panel here. Wow, that came off easy enough. Yeah, not much tape on that. That was just the hold downs. Yep. Holding that down. And I've got a little bit of an entry point here for a putty knife. All right. We'll get that under there without marring the little inlay cuts too much. Yep. It's it's coming loose. You can hear it. There we go. Wow, that's cool. All right, we got a little bit of tape on here. Let's pull this off and then we can show it to the camera. That's a clock body. That is a cool clock body. So what do you say? We inlay these rays, we get the face in there, we get this thing built up. Let's do it. So this is it, an awesome mid-century clock. Really nice organic shape, rays. I don't know how I would have made it without the shape or origin. The rays are actually my favorite part. What was the favorite part for you guys? Working with you, you Rob? Rob. I thought it might be. Who are you? I'm Russ from Shaper Tools. I'm Jake from Shaper Tools. I'm Rob Johnstone from Woodworkers Journal. Thank you so much for watching.